Check Podcasts. Hi, I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. This is Chamber Chats coming to you as always from the podcasting studios here at the Czech Media Group, one of our chamber champions. I would like to acknowledge as always that I live and work at the unceded ancestral territories of the Lekwungen speaking nations known to us as Songhees and Esquimalt. Chamber Chats is made possible by the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union. A few weeks back on the program, we were speaking with Paul Nursey, who's the CEO of Destination Greater Victoria, which is the organization that promotes tourism uh, in the South Vancouver Island region. So there's another organization we want to talk about today because there's a whole bigger island out there. And this organization uh, talks all about Vancouver Island. It's it's standing for Vancouver Island. In fact, they are called 4VI. We're going to talk with them today with the guy who is the uh, acting president and CEO and the VP of Business Impact and Engagement for 4VI. He's Brian Kantz. Hi, Brian. Hello. Nice to see you. You too. So let's imagine you're meeting somebody for the first time and they say, what do you do for a living? What's your answer? Yeah, the the classic elevator pitch is uh, it's interesting because about a year ago, uh, 4VI was formed out of what was formerly Tourism Vancouver Island. So for the first few months, I would say formerly Tourism Vancouver Island. But now I I typically say to people, we're a social enterprise with a focus on ensuring that uh, tourism is a force for good for this region forever. And my role is to help steward business development, marketing and our community engagement. So it's kind of representing the industry as a whole, and and the, the, we'll unpack the idea of a yeah. social enterprise in just a second. But so, if I'm that stranger, explain, describe for VI to me. Describe how you do what you do. Yeah, so we're a, a team of uh, people, mostly based in Nanaimo, but we have staff members uh, up and down the island. I'm I'm typically based in Esquimalt. Uh, we've got staff members from from Port Alice down to here. Um, what we focus on is uh, really two specific areas. We are one of the six tourism regions within the province, so functioning as a Vancouver Island region and serving our relationship and contract with Destination British Columbia, which is the provincial crown corporation for tourism. And then on the other side, which is uh, within the social enterprise, we have advisory services that we offer to destinations and businesses. So we saw throughout the pandemic uh, how important tourism is because it went away and it left our economy. Um, a number of the other organizations you mentioned are very deeply involved with the actual marketing side, uh, DMO, destination marketing organizations. Um, I don't, you don't do quite as much of that, do you? No, well, you know, we used to. Uh, tourism Vancouver Island existed for about six decades prior to us shifting to this social enterprise model and, and renaming ourselves to 4VI. Um, and with that change, um, it was really happened right before the pandemic. And then, of course, the pandemic changed everything. Um, we used to do marketing through our contract with Destination BC. And so it was direct um, acquisition marketing for visitors to come to the Vancouver Island region. Most of that is now done in-house, centralized through Destination BC. And so then we offer a specific set of uh, deliverables for the contract that we hold as a region for Vancouver Island in partnership with the other four regions of the BC Regional Tourism Secretariat, and then uh, Vancouver Coast and Mountains, which is uh, directly involved and aligned to Destination BC. Okay, so let's back up a little bit to the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, you are you're defined as a social enterprise. What exactly does that mean? Yeah, it's it's a relatively new concept, I think, here in Canada and mostly in, in North America, but a really well established model for businesses in places like Europe. With the social enterprise, we still function as a nonprofit. Uh, there's obviously the opportunity to function as a for-profit social enterprise. But what we do, instead of trying to feed shareholders or, or really just look at a zero-based budget and bottom line, we'll generate revenue from our work uh, through our various contracts and services. And then we'll take the, the net revenues from that surplus and invest it back into the communities of Vancouver Island. And so we have a goal by 2030 that as a social enterprise, we'll invest $10 million back into the Vancouver Island region through our work. Okay. Um, so I want to kind of break, you kind of operate within these four pillars of, of, yes. of, of theory and how that all operates. So how do you work to support business? First of all, we, you kind of touched on that, but let's talk more directly about that. 
Yeah, so the, the move actually to a social enterprise came out of the pandemic. Um, you'll likely recall the immediate kind of closing, turning off the tap of, of tourism in most cases, uh, especially here on Vancouver Island when the pandemic first kind of arrived as a, as a major concern. Um, what happened then was, uh, you know, concern from businesses, I'm not going to be able to keep open, I'm going to have to lay everyone off, we're going to, we're going to go out of business. And so taking what we were doing as an organization, and not being able to do most of it, which was, uh, you know, welcoming visitors and, and helping uh, benefit that growth, we shifted and created the Vancouver Island Tourism Resiliency Program. And through that program, over the course of two years, it did then expand in year two to a province-wide program. We actually helped support 500 businesses through training, advising, um, coaching, um, even helping them fill out grants for applications for funding, um, loans, and things like that. And within those 500 businesses in this region, we helped probably about 4,000 people um, directly involved, either employed or owning these businesses and about 140 women-owned businesses and Indigenous-owned businesses. So that disruption that happened with the pandemic, of course, one of the most prevalent things was the loss of workers who decided yeah. that they, they needed employment. They moved out of the sector. They found employment elsewhere. They're not exactly running back in big numbers. So that's another part of the business support that you're involved yes. with, I would think, right? Yeah. And so shifting out of the pandemic into this, this model in the last year, our focus has really been to uh, continue in providing that training, um, the development opportunities, um, really helping to connect businesses to networks where they might not know they exist. Um, we have a really strong partnership with GoToHR, which is a you know employment and training focused organization for the province for tourism. Um, what, uh, what we find the benefit in supporting businesses now is understanding their concerns about labor. Um, we have conversations with them about you know, housing policies and workforce housing, affordable housing, um, foreign worker requirements, everything that you know you are are dealing with at the chamber as well and advocating for. So the alignment that we have with businesses is is really trying to kind of connect them to powers that be um, levels of government and and help with that understanding. I am hearing signs and 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 feedback from you know people in our region, people around the province that employment and tourism has somewhat stabilized in a number of cases. There's a lot of imbalance, though. I, I could, you know, we could list off six businesses that say that they're fully staffed for the summer, and then I could give you six more that aren't. Um, and so the the labor force challenges existed pre-pandemic. They were exacerbated by the pandemic, and there's no simple solution, but it's it's definitely where we're focusing our support for businesses right now. Yeah, tourism being such a big part of our economy, it's sort of embedded into our economy, but it's embedded into our culture, and it's embedded into our communities. Communities is another pillar for 4VI. I want to talk about that next. Our guest on Chamber Chats today is Brian Kant, who is the acting president and CEO and the vice president of business impact and engagement with an organization called 4VI, which is a, an island-wide tourism support organization. You know, we all talk in terms of community, community building, community safety, community everything, but that sense of community is also kind of built into what 4VI does too. So tell me about that. Yeah, one of the pillars of social enterprise that we have is community. Um, we have, you know, about 870-ish thousand people that live in this region, which for us is, it's tip to tip and coast to coast, including the, the small islands, the archipelago around Vancouver Island. Um, with that, we need to really understand what the, the tourism industry does for residents and what residents need from the tourism industry. And so that focus really for us is, not necessarily telling residents this is the the value of tourism in your community this is how many people are employed by tourism the, all of that's really important but a really great place to live is a great place to visit sometimes a great place to visit is not a great place to live and we want to ensure that the first the the former part of that is is really the key people choose to live in this region um, they love it, and people love to visit this region. But you can look to several communities in on Vancouver Island that are a bit challenged by too many what what they would determine is too many visitors. Um, you know, it's <laughs> down to it's hard to find parking in Tofino in the summer. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's just the reality, and um, and yet 
the benefits that are coming from tourism are are many, um, but I don't think that we're as a, a an industry doing a very good job of asking residents what they want. Um, you know, it was Tourism Week recently across Canada, and all I could read about Tourism Week was the economic benefit of tourism and that this many people are employed and this is what revenues are compared to 2019. And I couldn't help but think, are we asking the right questions of the communities and the residents? Are we asking them, you know, what would matter? And and part of the work that we've done, um, for example, in Cumberland, we helped uh, with a mountain bike trail enhancement rather than go blaze a new trail in the wilderness helped fix a really popular trail that the residents there absolutely love. And it's really important to them, but it's also a reason why you'd go to Cumberland. You know, you raised the point about parking in Tofino, for example, there's a, there's a certain camp of people that would say, well, fewer cars is the answer, get other ways of moving people around. That's a bit of a shift in culture, but tourism is going somewhere and experiencing the culture that's in place where you're going. And at the same time, the tourism uh, experience itself has its own culture. So tell me about how 4VI works with the idea of culture within tourism. You know, we we struggle somehow um, in really, truly understanding culture within the mindset of tourism. And what has really benefited in this region and in British Columbia is the commitment to Indigenous tourism and, and our work with both Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada and Indigenous Tourism BC. The Vancouver Island region is home to 50 nations. And so we, in our work, represent the Coast Salish, the New Chalneth, and the Kwakwakiwa nations um, within our region. I, you know, I'm currently in Lekwungen territory when I'm in Nanaimo, it's Nanaimo. And it's, it's understanding the value of that culture and the benefit that it brings and fostering conversations to enhance that and, and to work with the nations to see where opportunities lie. You know, we're all on our path of reconciliation. No one has ever figured out what to do because we've never done this before. And our commitment to that is to really ensure that we walk together and that we have those conversations that are meaningful. The other side of the culture for tourism is, you know, this is a, a very diverse area of British Columbia. There are so many different cultures that are represented on Vancouver Island, and it's working with them to help showcase the importance of them through food and, uh, you know, every everything from food to art um, and and just meeting people. Um, one of the, the most fascinating things that I've ever done in Victoria, and I've lived here for more than two decades, is to visit the Chinese cemetery, mm -hmm. uh, which I didn't know existed uh, because it wasn't something that people talked about or knew about. Um, and it's it's a really important part of Victoria's culture. Yeah, and if you weren't Chinese, you probably wouldn't know it was there if your heritage was. And the Chinese Museum downtown, which we did a chamber chat with a while ago, another terrific experience. But, you know, when you talk about uh, working with Indigenous operated companies and, and people who are involved in the Indigenous culture, all of us can learn so much from them about the stewardship of the land as we all work very hard to repair the damage that's been done to the planet. Uh, and the environment and sustainability side of what 4VI does is another huge pillar in what you do. Yes, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's it's grounding the purpose of the entire team um, and our our mission, um, ensuring travel is a force for good. Um, we can't do that if the places that we love to visit aren't protected and maintained. We recently, in our first year, um, worked with Synergy Enterprises, just an amazing organization based here in Victoria, uh, to conduct a full scale carbon audit of the impact of tourism based on 2019 numbers. Uh, I mean. We could have easily chosen the 2020 and 2021 numbers, but right. uh, let's let's be honest, it probably wouldn't have worked very well. No. But uh, we did a, a carbon audit based on that. Uh, so, you know, about uh, 10, mil 10 million visitors uh, to the, the Vancouver Island region in that year, um, producing 2 million tons of uh, CO2 equivalent, um, which... You know, you and I can think, well, is that big? But then we could also think, well, that doesn't sound like very much. Um, it's equivalent to about 540,000 cars on the road a year, which in that case doesn't sound like it's very small. No. But this this is a baseline. We've never been able to truly measure from a, a bottom-up approach the impact of tourism um, on the environment through this uh, the carbon output. 
Um, but from that, it wasn't just, okay, well, we've done that. That's great. It's let's put together a climate action plan to help us become net zero, to help us reduce our impact overall as an industry and set that target toward 2030. And that's just one of the aspects of the work that we're doing in the environmental sustainability side. We're also a biosphere certified organization and working with businesses to help them look at biosphere commitments as well. I think all of us at some point in our lives have gone through some experience, whether it's an adventure or a store or a retail or a whatever, a retail, whatever it might be, where the first impression was horrible. And you said, oh, man. I'm never coming, but I'm never doing this again. I'm never coming back here. Something you guys are doing, I want to talk about next. uh, And that is the idea of a first impression assessment. On Chamber Chats today, we're speaking with Brian Kent. He is with an organization called 4VI. He is the acting president and CEO and the vice president of business impact and engagement. So you only get one chance to make a first impression. And you're working with businesses now within your organization to help people with an assessment of the first impression. Tell me about that. Yeah, so we've uh, we put this together uh, as part of the the tourism resiliency program in the pandemic, um, and uh, we've carried it on since. Uh, we've worked with several communities in the the Vancouver Island region to conduct a first uh, impressions assessment. Uh, most recently, we did uh, Lake Cowichan. Um, and what happens is, um, I mean, I'm sure everybody's heard the term secret shopper, mm-hmm. but uh, this is on, in the tourism space. So someone comes to your community um, unannounced and What's the first impression? What's the welcome sign look like? What uh, is the condition of the sidewalks? What's the accessibility um, feature? What's your downtown square look like? Or um, you know the the frontage of businesses? And um, it's a it's a very kind of comprehensive look, um, but a, a first look. Um, you know, you you drove into Lake Cowichan. What did you think? Um, and you know, there's there's rigor and and evaluation and rubric behind it. Um, But what we do is take that and then we have some stakeholder meetings and rights holder meetings and sit down and have conversations after we've uh, visited unannounced. Um, We take all of that feedback and generate a report um, with proposals and recommendations for that community. So we're certainly not uh, being prescriptive and, and telling a community, this is what you need to fix or else no one's going to visit here. But if you put yourself in the shoes of a first time visitor or a repeat visitor, this is what we feel they're seeing. And these are some recommendations that we think you can make. And it's not in any way meant to be critical. We had a, a conversation with the Lake Cowichan Chamber after our first impressions report was given to them. And they they had some probing questions and some concerns. But the other side of that was... Uh, we're not telling you you have to do this. This is just what we saw. And um, and from that, we had a really great discussion with them because they they started to see the opportunity. And when you live somewhere, you, you, you tend to stop looking at the welcome sign or how things are. It's just part of your life. Um, and so it's, the, it's that fresh look. Chambers all do good work when it comes to that stuff. So yes. there, there are no exception. You, you mentioned access to some things too. And uh, you know, in large, Vancouver Island has this reputation of being a great place for adventure holidays, for experiences that involves beaches and trails and mountains and, and hiking. But there are, of course, people who can't enjoy that because they deal with different levels of ability and, and accessing those things. Tell me what you're doing around that. Yeah, so we worked uh, to create accessible travel guides for nine communities in our, our region, and we're actually going to be adding another community Um, in Greater Victoria in the next uh, short while. Um, What it is, it's an online accessible guide that people can go and and take a look and see what what public and private facilities are offered um, that would be amenable to their ability. Um, There's a a bit of a concept in the accessibility space that everyone is temporarily able-bodied. So at some point, you and I, uh, I mean, I don't have my glasses on right now uh, for the purpose of this chat, but normally would. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, I think, pretty pretty easy to get around. We can do the hikes and things. But 
um, that may not last. And so when we, we do this, it's the recommendations for people that may need to consider how to access the beach, um, whether they are a, a you know, wheelchair um, user or if they're hard of seeing or hard of hearing. I, I think of my dad. He's in his late 70s and uh, would love a trip to Tofino, but I would use the accessible travel guide to make sure that we can get him to the beach safely um, and so that he enjoys it. And so we're continuing to expand that program, but it was really well received. And we worked with the Spinal Cord Injury, um, Injury Association of BC to, to help put these plans together. There's interactive videos um, and there's a lot of imagery, but uh, the, the nuts and bolts of it is, um, this is how you can access this space. This is fully accessible. This is a space that uh, is um, you know, on a continuum of being wheelchair accessible to this point, um, but really uh, you know, useful, tactical information for people. You talk about the experiences you had in Lake Cowichan and the stuff you did in Cumberland. Uh, give me another example of what you've done where you've, you've sort of interacted with a community or an experience uh, to help them audit what they're doing. Yeah, one of the the areas where I'm actually most proud of the work that we've done in the last year is uh, we created a, a limited series podcast, which, uh, you know, it's certainly not going to be the number one on Spotify as Brian Kent, but um, it's called the Indigenous Voices of Vancouver Island. And we worked with uh, an amazing collection of, of Indigenous owned businesses in the Vancouver Island region um, to showcase the work that they're doing um, and, and the culture that they're sharing through their business. Um, and it was, uh, you know, all over the island um, and, you know, places that you you may not consider, but are offering that unique experience. And so it's definitely, uh, you know, a, a different approach to marketing, but it's been really well received. The metrics that we have are that it's as popular with residents who live here as it is uh, people who are maybe considering visiting here or have visited here. So people from away. So just to wrap it up, um, who pays for all this? How is it funded? Yeah, so uh, what we have for our social impact uh, investing investing is our um, you know surplus revenues. So we have several contracts that we um, operate. Uh, Destination BC as a, our function as a region is uh, probably no surprise our largest contract, but we also serve uh, several communities on the island for their tourism needs. And then um, as we grow out for VI more advisory services, um, and then the surplus from that will go back into it. So um, we've also, you know, worked to to um, obtain grants from organizations like Pacific Can, which, you know, the, the federal government's heavily investing into British Columbia, which is great, um, and looking for opportunities to work with organizations. Um, and uh, we've also worked with our other regional partners um, across the province to to generate other work like that. So um, currently right now we're we're working province wide on sustainability action plans for communities, um, which is a fully funded program where communities can um, sign up, whether it's through the destination marketing organization or the economic development arm and write their sustainability plan with coaching and guidance um, and incorporate it into the work that they're doing. Yeah. I'll just remind everybody that Pacific Can is the BC specific economic development arm of the federal government. That's what that is. Brian Kant, thank you for your time. What's the website? Uh, it's 4VI, so F O R V I dot C A. All right. Brian Kant is the acting president and CEO and the VP of Business Impact and Engagement for 4VI. Brian, thanks for being here. Thank you, Bruce. I'm Bruce Williams, and we'll see you again for another Chamber Chat. Mm -hmm.